4.40 a.m. And I am headed out to see Rainbow Mountain early start. And it's cold. So here we are at our breakfast spot. We're at 3,900 meters. I'm not sure how high that is in feet yet. And I have no signal to look it up. Absolutely gorgeous here. All right, so I got my ticket and I got my cool hiking stick and we are ready to go to the Montaña de Siete Coleras, the Rainbow Mountain. It's very high elevation up here and we're just gonna keep getting higher and higher. It's so beautiful. There is the option to take a horse if you want which is 60 solas one way which is about 20 bucks or 80 solas both ways it seems like that would be kind of a fun adventure actually oh hello <laughs> hello horsey i decided to take a horse along the path from the beginning while others around me were dropping like flies on the trail They'd catch a ride from horses coming back down the mountain. There were sandals. That's the traditional sandal. This is the last stop for the horses. I'm so glad I took a horse instead of walking. But we're not there yet. And the elevation is so high. We're actually going up over um, 16,000 feet when we make it to the top. This cute little lady selling water here. Thank God for her. It's so hard to catch your breath up here. And I was feeling a little bit nauseous and a little dizzy. And I'm just taking it easy and taking it slow. Oh, my lips are pale. Here comes Lance. He hiked the whole thing. So pretty. How's it going? How was it? Not bad. This last leg is definitely, definitely slow going. Were you feeling any symptoms of anything? Headache? No, not too bad. Oh, that's good. Just short of breath. Okay, I'm still hiking up, but this is my view. Sixteen thousand eight hundred feet. Oh my gosh. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, I'm so short of breath. Look how beautiful this is. La Montaña de Siete Coleras, the mountain of seven colors. Here's at the top, Rainbow Mountain. Lom was up here. And this spectacular view. Check out that glacier. Oh my God, that is amazing. We're gonna keep going up. So hopefully I'll be okay going up there. As I continued going up, my head began to pound and the nausea became more severe. I felt dizzy and my footing was unstable as if I had too much to drink. You can also hear changes in my voice with my words becoming a little more slurred. I still have to go up that high, up all these steps. I'm almost there, but I'm going to tell you. This is no easy task at all. I just have to keep showing this view, even though I'm not at the top yet. It's spectacular. By the time I got to the top, it was so windy and cold that it felt like the tips of my fingers were getting frostbite. They actually turned purple, which is also a sign of altitude sickness. Okay, I am 
extremely nauseous now. I think I stayed up a little bit too long like I did on Whitney. I'm gonna head back down. Mountain. We consider all these mountains Apus. Apus means the space of the guy. Yeah. Of course, our guide came right as I was starting to head down. He started talking about the mountains, but all I heard was wah 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 wah. I knew I had to get down, but at the same time, I didn't want to appear to be rude. In front of you, the Rainbow Mountain. You know around the world you can find three countries that have this precious view, oh. this precious color. Yeah. Japan. Japan. China, sorry. Oh, China. Argentina. Argentina. And Peru. And Peru. Like oh, one. cool. The Red Valley. In front of you. Uh -huh. Over there. I told you about one trek, seven days. Oh. Do you remember? Uh huh. Which was around this moment. Holy moly. It must be freezing. It's really freezing, no? <laughs> yeah. We need to have a good a good implement. A hiking boot. Yeah. A good trekking pool. A good tent. And a good tour guide. And them tour guide. Oh yeah. Like Ricardo. Look at the clouds moving in. It's starting to snow. I was so fatigued that I just wanted to walk with my eyes closed. But every time I closed them, my vertigo became really bad and everything began to spin around me. I finally took a seat, closed my eyes, and rested my head in my hands for a moment. As I did this, a Peruvian man approached me. He had sun-kissed cheeks and a red poncho flapping in the wind. He held his hand out to me and said in his thick accent, Here, try this. This will help you. I told him thank you and reached my hand out to accept his offering, but he vanished into thin air right in front of me. That's when I knew my altitude sickness was really bad. Altitude sickness is no joke and definitely not something to play around with. When I first got to Peru, I was taken acetylzolamide, or Diamox, to help with the altitude sickness, but because of the reaction to my hands and feet with intense vibration, I decided to quit taking it. And that was a big mistake for ascending this high in elevation. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and check out my memoir titled Wildflower, A Tale of Transcendence. Ciao for now.